Yeah, man. You've been studying with Sonoran Desert Institute, right? Yeah, I love SDI. I'm a regular gunsmith. Awesome. Well, I wanted to see if you could help me out. I have a squib in my shotgun. Oh, a what now? A squib. You do know what a squib is, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Have you tried uh, putting any water in there? Why would I put water in it? Anyways, I was gonna see if you could fix that for me. Yeah, absolutely, I can get that done lickety split. Great, just be really careful with it. This was my grandpappy's gun. Absolutely, I am always the most careful. All right, man, thanks. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, all right, man, see you later. How did he get a whole squid in there? Don't worry, little guy, I'm gonna save you! be fine. What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're back on the range and today we're going to be conducting another gun science experiment. I am really excited about this one. Let's go get set up and get started. It's going to be one of them days. Ha! So today we're going to find out just how dangerous a squib could be. So what is a squib? Well, a squib occurs when you fire a gun and there is not enough pressure created to push the bullet completely down the barrel and it gets lodged somewhere inside your barrel. This potentially is very dangerous. If you have a bullet lodged in your barrel unknowingly and then you load another round in and pull the trigger, you could have a catastrophic failure. And trust me, I don't feel too nice. So today we're gonna to see just how dangerous a squib could be using several different firearms. We have a Mossberg bolt action 30-06, a Sears Roebuck pump action 12 gauge shotgun, and I have a Canik TP9 SFX chambered in nine millimeter. Okay, we've got everything set up and we're gonna start out with the 12 gauge shotgun. There is a one ounce slug lodged in this shotgun barrel. So now I'm gonna load another 12 gauge one ounce slug inside this shotgun and see what would happen if you had a squib and you fired another slug right behind it. Okay. Oh. Safety on. I am going to ratchet strap this thing down real quick. A few moments later. We'll get our string set up. Take this safety off. What? Were you expecting something? Okie dokie. Here we go. Go check that out. Oh, 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 okay. That is a, <laughs> oh my God. This, this looks like something out of Looney Tunes, okay? That is ridiculous. <laughs> I did not expect this. So this is a smooth bore 12 gauge shotgun. And when I squibbed it, it really didn't take much to get that slug to slide down into this barrel. So I really did think that it would just push the slug out and it would just fire. I, I honestly didn't expect that to happen. So our Sears and Roebuck 12 gauge shotgun looks like it's out of commission. Oh, I forgot the ejector is broken on the shotgun. 
So after looking at the slow-mo footage, I can say that obviously we had a spike in pressure and then both slugs seem to have made it out the end of the barrel. I don't think you would have been injured from this, but you definitely would not be firing any more slugs that day. <sighs> Squibs are bad. That's all I got. Hit that subscribe button. The shotgun was a lot more eventful than I thought it would be. Now we're going to move on to a rifle. This Mossberg a bolt action 30-06 is equipped with a squib about halfway down the barrel. And behind it, I'm going to load an Underwood ammo 30-06 150 grain AccuBond. We're going to load this in here. Mm. Next scar is tingling a little bit. Safety on. Scenario, you're deer hunting. You fire at the deer and you don't hit it. You think it's because you missed, but really you had a squib. You load one wall right behind it. What's gonna happen when you pull that trigger? Are you gonna get the deer or pay a visit to the emergency room? Let's find out, shall we? And now I'm gonna go hide behind my truck. Okie dokie, let's see what happens. Here we go. Ooh. Really curious to see what that looks like. Oh, 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 all right, that does not look good. This barrel was just absolutely ripped apart. And it looks like either the bullet we just fired or our squib is still lodged in the barrel. So again, obviously the squib created a large spike in pressure causing the barrel to be ripped apart, but this time the squib and the bullet did not clear the barrel. So after looking at this, I would say obviously there is potential for injury here, and you definitely would need a new hunting rifle if you managed to have a squib. But the good news is, your scope would be just fine. I am most excited about this next test because when I was in my first police academy, we were doing firearms training and a fellow cadet had a squib. The squib made it just far enough down the barrel to where the slide almost could close, but not all the way, and he was not able to pull the trigger. He tapped and racked several times and then finally figured out that he had a squib lodged in his barrel. I'm very curious to know if you had a squib in a semi-automatic pistol and it was not loaded with a super spicy round, just standard factory ammunition, would you just need a new gun or would you be missing a few fingers? So as of right now, there is a squib lodged in this Canic TP9 SFX and I'm gonna load behind it an Underwood Ammo 124 grain full metal jacket. Not gonna lie, I did not expect our results today to be so explosive. So I'm really excited to see what happens with this. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, survey says, it doesn't look like it exploded. I wonder if it actually cleared the squib. Couldn't show you guys that it is unloaded before I looked down this barrel here. It cleared it. It cleared the squib. I do not see any bulges. or anything. Wow. Huh. Canic? You make a pretty tough barrel. So I have three more rounds of Underwood ammo, nine millimeter, 124 grain full metal jackets. Let's put this thing back in the vise and see if it will function normally after clearing a squib. All right, first pull. Make sure the gun didn't move. Move just a little, but not much. Give her one more pull. OK, 
okay? Crank her forward just one more time. One more time! Okay. <laughs> well, I would say that after having a squib in your barrel, whether you knew it or not, uh, you'd probably still be all right with this one. <laughs> this Canik handled that squib quite well, but that does not mean that every handgun out there would have the same results. Every situation is different, and as we've seen today, having a squib in your barrel can be quite catastrophic. All right, well, that's gonna be it for today's video. What did you think about today's experiment, and are there any other firearms experiments that you'd like to see on the channel? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a big favor and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistic Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time. Well, <laughs> looks like I'm walking home.